welcome back friends in this videos we are talking about antigen antibody interactions and particularly in this video we'll be talking about how to measure the amount of antigen or antibody present in a sample using fluorescence detection technique it is called immunofluorescence immunofluorescence detection techniques now, uh, as the term suggests, it is uh, about the immunological system, that means about the immune complex, which is antigen-antibody complex. And obviously, we'll be using fluorescence for the detection purpose. Now, this immunofluorescence can be of two types. It can be uh, direct type, and another one is the passive or indirect. indirect type okay so there are two type of immunofluorescence detection technique now the direct type of immunofluorescence so what this immunofluorescence is giving us is simply it give us the presence of immune complex in a system okay so suppose we are having antigen now if we put antibody there antigen antibody will form a complex and from this complex we can get the signal of fluorescence okay so what we'll do we'll target the antigen and antibody complex sometimes or we target some antigen sometimes okay so depending upon this target we get our desired fluorescence results and by measuring the intensity of the fluorescence we can calculate the amount of antigen that are present okay for example say say this is our sample so this is a uh, say this is a, a special condition or special type of plate in this plate what we are uh, having we are having or say simply let, let us consider it is a sample holder in this sample we are having the antigens so these are the antigens that are present so all of these things are antigens now we don't know the concentration of antigen in our sample suppose we take the serum of a patient's uh, patient or blood of a patient we don't know the amount of antigen that are present because the antigens are uh, related directly related to the diseases right so if you measure the concentration of antigen we can get uh, to know what kind of diseases that particular patient is having so having this uh, patient is having this antigen so what we'll do is some add antibodies into this mixture we'll add antibody now what we can do we can modify this antibody we can modify this antibody so this antibody is conjugated with any kind of fluorophore molecule so it's at or tagged with any fluorophore molecule so antibody is tagged with a fluorophore now uh, if you remember the structure of antibody it's, it looks like this right it is having an FAB re region which is this region which interacts with antigen and another FC region is also present now this FC region is not interacting with the antigen so if we tag this FC region with any kind of fluorochrome suppose here for example say this is the red color fluorophore we have provided this so this is the tag here so it is emitting the red color fluorescence we can detect this fluorescence and intensity of the fluorescence so intensity of the fluorescence can tell us the amount of uh, this antibody that are present. So we've added this anti uh, this antibodies. So now this antibody can go and bind with this antigens. So as they are binding with this antigen, so here it is. So here uh, is the binding of antibodies. So as they are binding with this antigen, so antigen antibody complex so is established and it is giving us the fluorophores so once after this antigen antibody binding is established properly we get our fluorophore now the, for this process what is uh, in detail is actually done is sampling in this chamber what we do actually instead of providing antigens uh, if freely like that so suppose this is our sample chamber in this chamber we just place antibodies attached or adhere to this uh, to this kind of uh, vials or test tubes or whatever so we just attach this antibody so the antigens are attached attached with this wall of this vial so they are attached with this wall why so that this antigen cannot go away cannot diffuse away so we've taken the sample and then we've treated this anti sample in such a way so that the antigens are attached to this uh, to the region or uh, the antigens are attached uh, to this mem uh, to this what you can say vial or whatever okay then what we add then we have this antibodies then why when we have antibodies antibodies are having tags so this antibody it is having a tag this antibody is also having a tag and here are also antibodies having tags so these are the antibodies having tags as you can see 
So antibodies will bind with the proper antigens. So if it's the interaction is sufficient, it will bind with these antigens. Now what it will provide us? It will provide us signal, right? So we can measure the signal. So we add this antibody tag. So we have added this tagged antibody onto this sample solution which is having this antigen attached with this wall. Okay. Then what we'll do, you can see there are two types of antibodies. One type of antibody which are just attached with this antigens. There are also other antibodies which are just freely uh, moving onto this uh, area. So what we need to do, we need to get rid of this because they are also, they can also able to give us uh, this uh, fluorescence intensity but, we, but they are not bound with the antigen. So if we get all the intensities that are coming out from those bound antibodies as well as the free antibodies, we will be measuring the wrong concentration of antigen because there are some antibodies which are not really attached with antigens. We only want signal from those antibodies which are attached or bound with antigens, right? So for that, we uh, we have made this first move to fix this antigen so that antigens cannot go out like that. So as we are fixing this antigen and those antibodies which are attached to antigens are also getting fixed. So ultimately this antigen antibody complexes are getting fixed. So then after adding it, we will remove the un unbounded uh, antibodies. So we give uh, some two or three times of wash that will uh, release this particular type of antibodies. They will be released outside. So only it will left up with the antigen antibody complexes. Then what we will do, we measure the intensity that is coming out. So we will measure the intensity, the fluorescent intensity that is coming out. Measuring the fluorescent intensity using fluorescent uh, measurement techniques will get the idea of the type of antigen that are present and the concentration of antigen that are present. Because remember, we will conduct the several type of experiments with having our known concentration of anti antigen. So suppose we are having several vials, we are having vial 1, vial 2, vial 3, so known concentration of antigen. So it is antigen concentration, suppose it's a particular antigen concentration for this one, it's another concentration say like that. So you get a varying concentration like that and using this varying concentration of antigen and getting this response of fluorescence, we make a standard curve, right? make a standard curve which is growing antigen concentration with this intensity of fluorescence increase. So here in this x axis will be antigen concentration, in y axis will be uh, the fluorescence, right. So as the antigen concentration is increasing, fluorescence uh, measurement is also increased. So we make this kind of standard curve. Then after that, for some unknown antigen, the concentration of which is not known to us, by simply measuring the intensity here, we can plot this intensity here and we can extrapolate the intensity to get the actual concentration of that antigen here. So this is the process of getting the concentration by uh, the measurement of this intensity of fluorescence. Okay. This is called the direct type of uh, immune response. This is the direct type of immune response. Now let us talk about the e indirect type of immune response. Now sometimes we also uh, look for the indirect type of immune response where the simple antigen antibody interaction cannot give us the result. In those cases, we need to rely on another type of system. So suppose instead of simple antigen, we are having antigen antibody complexes there. Suppose we are having antigen antibody complexes. So uh, say here, so here it is the surface and we are having antigens attached there and onto this antigen we are having antibodies which is pre previously attached. So these are the complexes that are found from the samples uh, serum or for, for the sample for the patient's sample. Then to get the interaction, to get the values from this, what we need to do, we need to design a type of fluorescent antibody which will be added to this previously added antibodies. So these are, these red colored antibodies are anti-antibody because here they are bound with the FC regions of the previously bound antibodies, right? So here in this case they are anti-antibody or also they are called the secondary antibody because these blue antibodies are called first degree or primary antibody and these are called the secondary antibody. Okay, and also called the anti-primary antibody because they are going against the primary antibody. That's why they are called the anti-primary antibody. Okay, so that's how these second antibodies can come and attach to these sections like that. Okay, so here it is. It's a surface. Here the antigens are present like that. Anti uh, antibody can come and bound. So we need to detect these complexes. So we are not detecting it directly. Instead, what we are doing, we are uh, adding, we are allowing the samples patient or, or the antibodies that are present in sample serum to be attached to make this antigen antibody complex. Then we add uh, antibodies which will target antigen antibody complex, especially which will target the primary antibodies. So from this uh, situation also, we'll be getting 
So here are also tags. So we'll be getting fluorescence. So we can measure this fluorescence. By measuring this fluorescence again, we can produce and extrapolate the standard curve to get the desired concentration of antigen. This is called indirect type of immunofluorescence detection. Okay, so using this kind of immunofluorescence detection, it is pretty easier for us and pretty quick for us to get the actual uh, unknown concentration of antigens. Remember, we have uh, talked about agglutination assays and precipitation assays in all these types of assays, especially the agglutination assays, those are qualitative in nature. We cannot uh, actually tell the concentration of unknown antigen, but here actually we can tell the concentration of actual antigen, so it's a quantitative measurements. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Thank you.